it's gone. But I've been this week. We uh, family and I we drove down to Arkansas, spent a couple days with my folks, drove up to St. Louis, spent a few days with my wife's parents and family, and then and then drove back yesterday, got back kinda late last night. It's good to sleep in my bed, but uh, I told Lois outside my brain's still catching up to my body a little bit. But I'm really glad to be with you today. Uh, thank God that he kept my family safe on the road. It was a lot of a lot of miles. Um, a good day for Vicar, you know. We don't have one though. He's uh, back in St. Louis. He made it safely. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, who made his send off so special. I know he was very touched. Him and his wife Stephanie. Uh, they're back in St. Louis, and uh, I know our paths will cross in the future. But uh, no Vicar for the coming year. So uh, a lot of me talking at you. Uh, let's see. Um, one announcement that's not in your bulletin here today. Um, as we start to look ahead to the, the normal year, the school year, uh, we're adding a Sunday school class, uh, I think, for the, for the even younger kids, which is really fun. So it's great to expand that programming, uh, but that's not, you know, it, it takes all of us. So if you're interested in helping with Sunday school or leading a class or helping in some capacity, uh, Emily wants to hear from you. So think about maybe helping out with Sunday school, especially if it's been a little while. I want to have a good Sunday school year, but it takes a lot of adults uh, to make it happen. A few announcements here. Uh, we're going to have a baptism in the 1030 service today. That's really fun. That's uh, Grady and Kayla Stillwell's little guy, Owen. Um, looking ahead this week, there's a couple of youth events. Tomorrow, it's an area youth uh, ga- gathering. That's not the right word. But uh, the youth from area churches are getting together at Thunder Road. Um, and then on Wednesday, uh, our youth group is going to have a little bit of a, a cooking competition, a bake-off. So that's kind of fun. Um, women of the church, you're all invited to a garden party at Linda Peterson's. That's Thursday at 6 p.m. Uh, sort of a time of, of food and fellowship, but also service, making flower bouquets for our shut-in members. Uh, most eyeglass ministry. Uh, it's a really nice program, and it's, and it's a very simple ask of you. If you have any old prescription eyeglasses sitting in a drawer, you know, even if they're 40 years old, um, you're not using them, but they can make a big difference to someone who doesn't have the same sort of access to optometrists and prescription lenses. So uh, bring those in, turn those in, and uh, we have a grant to, to send those overseas. And then looking ahead, I believe, to next week, our annual family fun night will be held here. We invite all of our CCC families and all of our church families food, you know, bouncy houses, all sorts of good stuff. So we'd love to see you be a part of that on August 14th. I think that's all I have for announcements. We will be uh, celebrating the Lord's Supper today at the communion rail, so just follow your ushers. And we'll continue uh, in our summer sermon series. We took a break for Vicar John's farewell last week. Uh, Today the topic will be the beginning, uh, the origin of life, the origin of being. You know, what does our world, do you say, as Christians, and, and how does it stand up to what others might be proposing? So we'll talk about the beginning today. All right, I think that's all I have for announcements. Glad that you're here. Let's stand and share a Christian greeting, and then we'll sing our opening hymn. You may be seated.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment of silence to name our sins to God and reflect on His grace and mercy. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, you give eternal life to all who partake in the body and blood of your Son, Jesus. Give us faith that we'll never be ashamed of him, but we'll take courage from his presence in our lives. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We continue with our first reading. The first reading is from Psalm 104, beginning with the 24th verse. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. 
Here is the sea, great and wide, which teems with creatures innumerable, living things, both small and great. There go the ships, the Leviathan, which you form to play in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the Lord, glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works, who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have been. May my meditations be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let the sinners be consumed from the earth and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Romans chapter 1, beginning with the 18th verse. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. God, or for his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore, God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand and sing the Alleluia in verse. we go. You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue by confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Do we have any children out there for the children's message? We got a couple. All right. We'll have the children's message at this time. Well, good morning, boys and girls. How are you today? Okay, today we're going to sing a song, okay? And I think it's a song that you know, but if you don't know, it'll be a new song, okay? We're going to sing the hippo song today. Do you know the hippo song? Okay, we're going to do it. We're not going to stand up. We're going to sit down to sing it, okay? So do the actions with me, and if any congregation members want to join us, you're welcome to. Okay, here we go. Ready? Sing it with me. In the beginning, God made the seas, and the forest filled with trees. God made the mountains way up high. Above it all, God made the sky. God's fingerprints are everywhere, just to show how much he cares. And in between, God had some fun. He made a hippo that weighed a ton. Hip, 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 hippopotamus. Hip, hip, hooray, God made all of us. Hip, 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 hippopotamus. Hip, hip, hooray, God made all of us. Nice job. All right, that's a super fun song, but what is it about? Oh, about Jesus. Okay. What's the first three words? In the beginning. So the song is all about creation and the things that God made. So what are some of the things from the song that God made? In the beginning, God made the, the seas and the forest filled with trees. He made the mountains up high and the skies above, okay? And his fingerprints are everywhere. What do you think that means? If we don't see fingerprints of God, but it means everything around shows that God is present. He created it. Everything that we see of this world, God made, okay? And he even had some fun. He made a big hippo, mm. okay? Hip, hip, hippopotamus. Hip, hip, hooray, God made all of us. That means he made you and me too. So a super fun song and reminds us that God, in the beginning, created the whole world and everything in it just from his voice. Okay? Because he is powerful. He is God. He is the creator. And so we praise him for what he made. Okay, let's fold our hands and let's say a prayer, okay? Dear God, we praise you for your creation. Help us to live for you every day. I love you, Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys can take a seat.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's topic is the beginning. Not just the beginning of you or the beginning of me or the beginning of the church, but the beginning of all things. Going way, way back, Genesis chapter 1. How does it start? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You know, throughout the series, we've been talking about competing worldviews, and there aren't much, you know, that are bigger than this. This is a big one. Where did we come from? Because it matters. It, it matters a lot. Sometimes we pretend that it doesn't. We say nice things, but how can you get the middle or the end of the story right if you don't get the beginning right? Where do we come from? How do we get here? What are we here for? Who's in charge? All these questions go back to this big question, what happened in the beginning? Now all of you got out of bed and came to an 8 o'clock service today, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to debunk a bunch of theories. I'm going to proceed with the assumption that you believe that you have a God who is living, who is active, and who is a creator. It's what God is. It's what separates us from God when you really think about it. If you want to lump entities into two separate categories, there's all the created things, like us, like your pet cat, like the birds of the air and the fish of the sea and the flowers in your garden, created things, and then there's the uncreated. That's what God is. It's maybe the most fundamental, elemental distinction that there is. There are the created things, and then there's the Creator. So what happened in the beginning, and why does it matter so much that we well, get it right and try to be as faithful as possible? There's big questions. Can I believe in a God who is a Creator? And if so, how did He create? And how long did it take Him to create? And why can I believe it or not believe it? A lot of big questions come up in our, in our heads all the time because the world will give you one or two or 50 different stories about how the beginning happened. But as Christians who have a biblical worldview, there's only really one story. A lot of stories out there. Some of them are religious in nature. But a lot of them, they, they kind of have this assumption that the universe that we inhabit always was. That there was no before time. And so any God that emerged, emerged from the creation. And there are higher gods and lower gods. And I'm talking about lowercase g gods. And this is where you get sort of pantheistic ideas and animistic ideas. If we want to use like theological terms. And if sort of God came from what was, and we came out of what was, we're all kind of divine and we all share in that. That's not a Christian distinction. The Christian distinction is what I laid out earlier. There is the uncreated, which is God, and then there is the created, which is everything else. Right? But you probably don't know a whole lot of pantheistic folks, although there's been a little bit of a reemergence you know, the, the spiritual but not religious types, they might adopt some of these ideas about the oneness of the universe. But what your kids are probably being taught in school, at least in public schools, is, is really an atheistic theory about the beginning. That some point in the far, far past, something happened and there was raw material, and the raw material through bajillions of years became ordered and became life and became sentient, and there's common ancestors, and, and everything that we see and feel and touch is a product of natural selection. And, well, I don't know. I think it takes more faith to believe in that sort of thing than what 
the Scriptures lay out for us. Or there are some, and you'll find a lot of those Christians, especially up here, who, who believe in God, but have a hard time wrestling with what God reveals to us in His Word about how we came to be, about the beginning. They'll say, well, you know, I went to school and my science teacher told me this, but I also went to church and my pastor and Sunday school teacher uh, taught me that God made me, and, and, and so maybe there's some sort of middle ground solution where, you know, God used these natural sort of evolutionary processes, and the world really is bajillions of years old, and but God had His hand in all that, and, uh, you know, the Bible... It's sort of in spirit telling me that God made things, but in reality, it was, it was sort of this atheistic evolution all along. And we try to marry these two conflicting ideas together, and it's always messy, and it leads to really tough questions like, well, if the Bible was lying to me about the beginning, the most foundational piece of my theology, what, what else is the Bible not telling the truth about? Is Jesus really the Son of God? You know, or is that just poetry? Did He really rise from the dead in His body and, and really ascend into heaven? Is He really coming again? Or is that just sort of a metaphor? And so you get these ideas about the beginning, whether there really was no beginning, what is always was, or, or that there was some sort of big bang and just incredible non-miraculous miracles that, that took all this disorder and chaos and somehow made order and beauty and, and, and all these things that we enjoy today. This sort of godless force. Or you can kind of be one of those Christians who wants to have their cake and eat it too. Likes parts of having faith, but when our faith actually gets tested, we fold and capitulate and we sort of push God's Word aside for something less than. But I submit to all of you today, let's be believers. Because it's not really unreasonable. When you look at the world that God has made, what do you really feel and what do you really think? When you look in the mirror, when you look inside yourself, are you a product of randomness and chance happenstance, or are you, as the Bible declares, fearfully and wonderfully made? Are you made in God's image? Are you endowed with identity and purpose and meaning? Are you loved by a higher being? Now these are questions we have to ask ourselves. When we look at the world that God has made and its beauty and its splendor and its intricacies and how functional it is that there's times of, of planting and time of harvest and we make our trip around the sun and we tilt it just such an axis that we have our seasons and we have a water cycle like what do you believe i would say it takes more faith to believe in the randomness of all that than in the order and design of it you are not committing intellectual suicide by believing that there is a higher power who made you and made all things. And that is what the Bible declares to us. You are made. You are created. And we have a God, an uncreated God, who is so immensely powerful that He spoke it into existence. That's how powerful our God is. There was nothing. And He said, let there be light. Let there be land. Let there be vegetation. Let there be beasts. Let us make God in our image. And people get hung up on how long that took. Some say He couldn't have done that in, in six days as the Bible declares. As Christians, we ought to wonder, why did it take Him so long? Our God is powerful. Nobody you talk to 
your cousin Larry or your 11th grade biology teacher or Neil deGrasse Tyson were there in the beginning. But God was. And He has revealed to you what He did and how He did it. He spoke creation into existence in six days. And at the very end of those six days, He made man. And from that man, He made woman. And He gave us a special position and special responsibilities in His creation to be caretakers of His creation. We know how the story went after that. Sin. The fall. But also the plan for redemption. The plan for salvation that was made manifest in Jesus Christ. The Old Testament begins with in the beginning. John's Gospel starts the same way. We heard it in our Gospel reading today. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. When we think about our story, our history, our past, our present, and our future, we have to go back to the beginning and think about what it is to be human. It's to be a creature. A creature who has fallen, but a creature who has been restored. Because the Word became flesh so that we might partake in a new beginning of sorts. A new creation. One in which we will be as we were meant to be. In communion with God. In fellowship with one another. Untainted by sin. Unbroken. That's the end goal of Christ's work on the cross and empty tomb. When He ascended into heaven, there was a promise that He would return on the last day. And that's what we have to look forward to. Christ was in the beginning with His Father and the Spirit. Christ remembers the creation of all things. He died and rose so that we might have a new beginning ourselves. That's a day we look forward to very much. So my friends, believe what God's Word reveals to you. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of chatter, a lot of chaos, a lot of ridicule about our beliefs in the beginning. It is not unreasonable or foolish to believe that we have a God who is higher than us. A God who made us. And a God who loves us. Because we don't get that part of the story right at the beginning, we'll never understand the end. We'll talk about that more next week. Amen. I invite you to stand for our prayers. In our prayers this morning, we lift up to God for healing and strength Wendy Lee, Marie Henke, Janet Nundahl, and Caitlin Unger. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ and for all people according to their needs. For the church, the people of God led from slavery in the wilderness of death to freedom and life through the forgiveness of sins. For boldness to proclaim the saving gospel to all those still captive and for strength in the face of temptation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For courage in the face of temptation, strength in time of test, and hope in the face of despair, that nothing may cause our faith to waver from our confidence in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For blessing upon the government and institutions of our land, for the light of God's Word to shine in the wilderness of unbelief, and for peace in our nation and among the nations of the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and those who suffer any need of body, mind, or soul, that God grant them healing according to His will and strength to endure their afflictions. Today we pray especially for Wendy, Marie, Janet, and Caitlin. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For hearts fully prepared through repentance and faith to receive the gifts of the Lord's body and blood and for the will to show forth in our lives the fruits of this blessed communion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray. 
trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we worship the Lord with our offerings. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to stand for the Lord's Prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when He was betrayed, took bread. And when He had given thanks, He broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is My body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of Me. In the same way also He took the cup after supper, and when He had given thanks, He gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in My blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of Me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated.
We stand and sing the post-communion canticle. Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your begotten Son into flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing our closing hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Please be seated. Well, thank you for uh, being here for worship today. It's always a pleasure and a privilege to gather around God's Word and sacraments uh, with you. Today there's a special focus on the beginning. And uh, it's an important uh, piece of our theology. It's a biblical truth that sometimes we shy away from. And, and the world has very little taste or patience for this idea that we have a God who is eternal, a God who is omnipotent, a God who is almighty, who can speak everything into existence. It's, it's unpalatable for a lot of us. And, and what is the reason behind that? I think for a lot of us, it's not because we see all the scientific evidence, so to speak, and, and make this determination. When you really talk to people, there's almost a hope that we're not created. Because if we have a God who is a creator, that means we have someone that we're dependent on, first of all, but also someone we're accountable to. And that can be scary for us as people, knowing that we have a God who is higher than us, a God who made us, who has expectations for us. 
But as Christians, we don't wither under that accountability, under those expectations, because we know that we have a God who is powerful, but also merciful, who is gracious, who loves us and forgives us. So when we think about our God who is great, who is mighty, who is a creator of all things, we also know this God who is merciful, gracious, and loving. And that God who created us is also redeeming us and will bring us to our eternal home. More on that next week. God bless you all. I'll greet you in the hallway.